Look, I'm, I'm, going to, uh, I'm going to strike a partisan note and say that I think I'm the only speaker on this motion who is opposed to it. Um, the reason that I'm opposed to it is because I think the government is already doing all the things that this motion speaks to. But also I am opposed to it because I think we play a very dangerous game when we start pointing fingers at foreign investors for problems that we have with schemes that we have established. It is, in a manner and form, exactly why we end up with some of the things we end up in a democracy, where it is more convenient to blame those who are not here, who cannot answer back, who do not have a voice in this debate, for problems that we have largely created ourselves. The member for Mayo rightly speaks to Australia being one of the driest continents in the world and that we have experienced one of the worst droughts in our history. The government has responded to that. It provided $8 billion in assistance and concessional loans to primary producers. Um, no one in this country uh, bemoans the fact that we did this at a very important time for primary producers. Um, we all, the, the nature of that thing, uh, of that assistance, was the farm household allow, allowance and the rural financial counselling service, which cost ta Australian taxpayers $65.5 million. That was done through the Drought Community Initiative. It, we provided $3,000 to farmers, to farm workers, to suppliers, to contractors who were facing hardship due to the drought. We also provided $29.9 million for mental health and wellbeing support, a two-year interest-free drought loan for farmers, tax relief, the provision of 100 gigalitres of water for fodder production. We also um, released $300 million for the Drought Communities Program Extension, redirecting $200 million from round four of the Building Better Regions Fund to drought-affected communities. And in addition to that, $138.9 million for roads to recovery for drought communities and um, for drought-affected communities. In addition, we also piloted $7 million for small business support programs, providing a two-year interest-free loans for agricultural um, dependent small businesses. We provided $15 million support for schools and early childcare centres. And we funded $15 million in tackling Times Together grants. Now, Mr Deputy Speaker, this was right and appropriate that we do this. But how many other businesses in Australia get that sort of support? How many times have Australian taxpayers stood up for people like that? The people in my electorate, in my part of Sydney, when the dollar drops by 50 cents and their cost of production goes up 100 per cent. They don't get that sort of support. When they find that they can't get raw materials because some foreign government has decided to close the ports, the Australian taxpayer and the Australian government doesn't step in to assist them in the same way that this parliament, time and time again, steps in to help Australian farmers. We included a $5 billion future drought fund. To us so this doesn't have to go on again and again and again. Now, these water rights are incredibly important, but they were started by the Howard government. They were supported by the then Labor government. But no one to this debate yet has, to, has spoken about the fact of the waste and mismanagement of our water resources in Australia by local councils. No one stands here in this parliament and holds them account. How many times have we seen, in particular in regional and rural um, New South Wales, that the same person who throws the chlorine tablets into the Olympic pool is also the same person in charge of managing the water resources for a local um, town? Australians, especially those in rural and regional areas, deserve better. We must demand better from them, for them. We talk about, um, we talk about um, waste of water. But no one wants to talk about the environmental flows that have led to the lower lakes that have seen 800 gigalitres, as the member for Indi, point, uh, the member for Mallee pointed out, um, that have gone, uh, that evaporate. That sort of waste and mismanagement is okay apparently because we put environment in the front of it. But no, no, it is far easier to blame foreign investors. I think.